Hey guys, okay, so we're in Visual Studio 2015 here, and we have a contrived situation. Essentially what I have is my app and some super cool library. Now normally when you get a super cool library from somebody else, it's going to be a DLL reference, but to illustrate how we can kind of play both sides of the equation by being the consumer and the producer of uh, this code here, we are going to uh, have it just as a project reference here. So um, what does our app do right now? Well, we uh, have a name manager in a console here, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to check each one of these names against a uh, something called the uh, uh, name manager, which will go out and return a pop culture model to us based on the name, so it'll know that this is uh, Fred from the Scooby-Doo TV show, hopefully. This, uh, we'll figure out what that is, that, and so on and so forth. So, uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and run this guy. And awkward silence here while it builds and runs. And it knows that Fred is from Scooby-Doo, George, we're not sure, John is from Game of Thrones, and Daphne is from Scooby-Doo. That's all exciting, great, and well, and as you can tell that this uh, particular example is probably not going to have any real world uh, use out there. So if we look into uh, the super cool library that we have here, we have a name manager, uh, we have a pop culture model, and we have different things that kind of figure out um, what something is um, from. So we got Game of Thrones, Scooby-Doo, and it looks like we got Smurfs as well. So nothing exciting yet. Uh, except if we go into the name manager, we got to ask ourselves some questions. So um, before we ask those questions, let's look and see what this guy does here. So this method here is uh, get model takes a string and it returns some sort of cool model back to the calling app. And uh, the three checkers that are configured right now are Scooby Doo, Smurf, and Game of Thrones. Looks like we're simply going to do a loop. If the name matches, we're going to create a model, fill it out, and return it back. If we fall all the way through the loop and we don't find out what it is, I guess we're going to return unknown. We didn't find anything, and that's uh, exactly what happened. So we should ask ourselves, uh, this is awesome and great, but let's pretend for just a little bit that this is a much more complicated app, and this app here uh, needs to possibly, um, l let's say logging, for instance. So, so when we get in here, we're debugging this. Uh, we want to know maybe that, okay, well, what name are you currently checking? What checker are you currently using? Did you find a match? And if you didn't find any matches, um, we didn't, uh, find anything and maybe we do that here. So you see the comments here that kind of illustrate that. So, your options are uh, we could import uh, some references such as log for net and write these to a logging system if we wanted to to log those um, and that way we could then open up our log files and go oh look at that um, here's where we're at in the in the process or here's the checkers that it that it went through before it determined it found it or didn't find it etc etc the problem with that is that becomes a highly coupled situation so that means my super little cool library let's, let's pretend we're now we're the author of super cool library the super cool library uh is now coupled to some sort of logging framework now we can kind of offset that a little bit by having some sort of ilog interface or or we make something up that that logging happens but that's not what the the goal of today is today the goal is is what if one or more things wanted to know or be notified when something happened now in order for us to do that um we will need to do something that i like to use all the time and it's called the observer pattern and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to at different intervals here where you see all the logging we're going to give uh, notification to whoever cares uh, that's external to our app so in, in the in this contrived example here it would be the my app uh, program here where uh, somewhere in here uh, we could tune into uh, what is going on inside a DLL that we have no right access to so remember we have two points of view 
the person writing the app that consumes Super Cool Library and then the author of Super Cool Library. So the the balance here is is the author of Super Cool Library we doesn't want to have to commit whoever consumes this to a certain logging framework or anything like that. We just want to notify the consuming app that something is happening and it's up to the consuming app to then use its chosen logging framework or notification framework or whatever it is because it might be a console app, might be a, a, a web API, who knows what the facade is. So uh, the first things that we're going to want to do is we're going to go into the name manager here and we're going to look at this interface real quick and quickly go, okay, this just does one thing. Let's start by adding some functionality to this. Okay, so what we'll do is notice where I put my cursor here. I'm going outside of the interface. We're going to go up here and we're going to add a public delegate and we're gonna say something to the effect of, and it returns void because this is just gonna be a, um, a method that we're gonna call from my app. So uh, what we're gonna do, let's say, um, Let's call it notifi notify um, handler or notification handler. Let's go like that. And then usually this is some boilerplate code, um, but um, events will need to be in this particular signature. So we're going to have whatever is actually sending this, and then we're going to have some sort of event arguments. And in event args, and a lot of times we, we write it just like this, it's basically going to be, well, the what are you trying to tell me? The problem we're going to run into right away as the author of Super Cool Library is we're going to um, want to have a more interesting event argument than what you're seeing there. So let's go and add a new class and let's call it uh, notification event arg. And this is just the way I do it. Of course, you can do it however you want, but we're going to simply. Uh, inherit off of event args if my computer will cooperate here. There we go. Event args and import that guy there. Yes, I'm using ReSharper to do that. And we'll just have one boring old string. We'll call it message and we'll have a getter setter. Oops, try that again. How about I put it in the right spot so it all works right. All right. I promise uh, I know how to program. Well, at least I think I do. All right. We got a message. Cool. What do we use that for? You don't know yet. So we're going to change this from just garden variety notification or event args to notification event arg. And then we're going to go to the interface and we're going to define an event. So observables are all about events in C Sharp. So we're going to do event. Um, we're going to say uh, we're going to call this event notification. And then more spelling fun notification. Okay. So we're going to call this handler. On notification. All right. So, wow. Made that harder than it should have been. Okay. So we've got uh, our regular old interface, and now we're going to add an observing type uh, construct to this guy. So uh, you'll see in just a second when we go into the name manager, it'll complain that, hey, I don't know what that new event is because you haven't implemented it. And let's go ahead and put it there. So now what we can do is we can say on notification, invoke whatever method gets passed in to whoever's observing us. What does that actually mean? Well, you'll see. Um, we're going to add this because we're the ones that are sending this notification out, and we're going to add a new event arg, and we're going to have a very simple message that we're going to send out. Um, this message is
we're just basically going to have the name. And, oops, we can get rid of that. Now, ReSharper is telling me that, okay, you have a possible null ref here, so no problem. Let's add if on notification, which is not null. So basically, I take this to mean, hey, if we have anyone actually listening to us, do this. Otherwise, we're pretty much going to skip it. All right, so there we go. All right, everybody looks happy. Let's build it. Come on, you can do it. This is that awkward silence time where nothing is happening. <laughs> while it's building. I don't know why my computer is slow today, but it is. Okay, and if we run our app again, uh, nothing actually will change yet, um, other than some internal things. Yeah, Fred, George, John, Daphne, got it. So if I go ahead and save that, I'm going to go back into my program now. I'm going to switch hats. Now I'm no longer the super cool library developer. Now I am the my app developer. We're pretending, of course. So if I come in here, I can say, hey, look at that, name manager. That has the ability to send out notifications if I choose to listen to them. So now I can go name manager dot on notification. And I'll use a little resharper magic here to create a, a private method here. And this private method here would be object sender. It should look familiar. And bam, there we go. So if I were to have my own logging framework in my app, at this point, I could just log the message. Since I don't have logging set up at the moment, I can kind of simulate the thing by doing this right here. Oops. Let's, let's go dot message. All right, now let's rerun this sucker. More awkward silence. Nothing is happening here. All right, there we go. So now we got checking name Fred. Fred is from Scooby-Doo. Checking name George and so on and so forth. Yay. So what have we actually done here? Well, uh, quite frankly, uh, we've done very little but have gotten a whole bunch. So now what we've done is uh, if we go back to name manager, switching back context there, um, every time we were going to say, hey, um, you know, log this with log net here, part of my app, we're saying, you know what? Why don't you just say what you're going to say, but let the consuming app do something with it. And it's up to them to log it, put it in a database, whatever they want to do. So uh, we can probably do a little refactor here. And if we copy this out here into its own private method. And let's see. We'll bring in a message. That message will be this. We can now go back up to here. Get rid of this. And we can say, hey, notify. And of course, I should have uh, kept that. But whatever, checking name. I'm going to surround in quotes. But here's the cool thing, since we put this in a little helper method, I can come down here and say, hey, you know what the current checker is, or something like that. Do, 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 do. We can say name checker dot get, oh, you know, there's a friendly name, isn't there? There we go. So my little uh, name checker, if we look at that, interface real quick. It's got check name, which is a method, and it's got a friendly name. So if we were to look at Scooby-Doo, it's a very, uh, very high-tech uh, list uh, checking here. Not really. And then uh, we have a friendly name, so that's where it's going to pull that friendly name. In case that looks a little like, where did he get that from? Of course, the code will be available on my GitHub. The link will be somewhere uh, in this video information. And all right, I'm already lost what I was doing. Yes, I was using this here. We're using that checker 
Now we're going to come down here and say, hey, we have a match. We matched. Yay. You know, let's let's uh let's make this even more unnecessarily verbose by say we did not match. And yes, what if there's a Fred from uh Scooby Doo and Fred from the Flintstones? Guess what? You've gotta be unique in the universe uh that we're testing here, that's all. And then uh if we come down here we'd we'll say we have no idea. Let's run that, and we should get a bunch of verbose messages um, dump out to the uh, console while the computer builds. I wish I could juggle for you, because I would. And there we go. Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff there. So checking Fred using Checker Scooby-Doo, we match. Fred is from Scooby-Doo. Checking George using Checker Scooby-Doo, we did not match. Using the Smurfs, we did not match. Game of Thrones, we did not match. We have no idea, and so on and so forth. So what did more, what did we learn here? So basically, we are decoupling um, messaging from logging and whatnot because... If I were a developer and I controlled both of these, I might be able to cheat and say, you know what, rather than do this notify here, I can do console.writeline because I know that this is going to run within the context of a console and whatnot. But I'd say that's cheating um, be, because obviously the, the contrived example here is super cool library is not controlled by us. And super cool library author wants to be able to not couple um, this cool new library with any sort of logging framework or something else. We just want to make it simple. In fact, we just want to expose uh, some information back to the calling app by doing uh, events, which is uh, then observed, which is why we're calling it the observer pattern. So right here is where we register, and boom, there we go. Um, now, of course, you can have more than one thing subscribed to your events. We've got the name manager, and there's just one um, one thing subscribing to it. Um, there could be a second app or a third and so on and so forth, and they can all register here. Some gotchas to be aware of. These notifications get registered to a specific instance in this case. You can use statics, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then... Another thing that you should look out for is don't rely on the orders. So I wouldn't necessarily use this as a pipeline. So, okay, notify such and such, and then all these handlers will run in a particular order for that. I would probably use some other pattern for that. But anyway, there you go. That is the observer pattern. Hey guys, thanks for watching this one on the observer pattern. Um, try to subscribe if you can. That's the only way I think I can keep doing these if I get some subscribers. Um, if you got any comments or feedback, just go ahead and uh, drop them in the uh, the comments below. Thanks, Manny. Manny, come here. Come here. Arr.